Greetings friends and fellow cigar box guitar enthusiasts. Del Puckett here and in this video I'm going to show you how to build yourself your very own patriotic theme three string cigar box guitar. Stay tuned. Greetings friends and fellow cigar box guitar enthusiasts. Del Puckett here and in this video I'm going to show you how to build a patriotic themed cigar box guitar. Greetings friends and fellow cigar box guitar enthusiasts, Del Puckett here and in this video I'm going to show you how to build a three string cigar box guitar. Alright, all kidding aside, all kidding aside, um, seriously, we are going to start off this video now. Okay, so first things first, acquire all your parts and components, everything you think you might need. Materials such as just spray paint. I was gonna do some uh, stars and stripes. So I got these sticky stars that I can use to like use as stencils. Found this awesome, awesome, awesome poplar wood. Look at the color in this thing here. And I got the heel to match. Seriously, this is one of those. This is one of those finds of wood where you're like, oh man, I'm going to save this for a rainy day. Well, guess what? Today's a rainy day. Yeah, this, this is just gorgeous wood all the way up and down. Look at the front and the back. And I also, also found some equally awesome fretboard material. Can you imagine how all this stuff is going to match? <laughs> oh my gosh. Seriously, dude. You're not going to be able to tell where one wood starts and the other one leaves off. Okay, so that's that's that. Oh, I uh, I've been carrying around this Partigas box forever and ever. So I went ahead and did some old red, white, and blue on it. Got some nice overspray on the back. Made the front nice and dark. I've been carrying around this box for a long time. It's been set. It's become separated from its top, and so I thought, well, 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 well. I just so happened to have the exact thickness of. Um, I don't know what kind of board this is. It's a it's a laminate, but look at that look at that top there. Look at all that. Oh my gosh, seriously. Um, so obviously it would happen to be the perfect size. So I'm going to cut out a top, and then maybe spray paint a nice rustic flag on the top, very artsy vibey thing, and then distress it like crazy. So yeah, so that's some of the parts. Just some of the parts. Of course, you guys know I get all my fretting materials, whether it's tools or, or fret material. I get them from the CB Giddy. I'll put a link to that in the bottom. I also stumbled upon this. Check this out. It's a, um, it's called a Giddy Bucker. It's got the cbgiddy.com um, address in the middle of the flag there. But this is like a humbucker. It's like a flat mount, right? So this you can get really close to the strings if you need to. And um, so we'll, we'll put we'll play with this one here for sure. Uh, of course, if I'm gonna have two pickups, I'm gonna need one of these selector switches. So I, I've experimented with a lot of selector switches. This one here seems to be pretty pretty reliable. Um, the only thing is sometimes you get a rattle on the. Um, um, Yeah, I think I think it's just the insides kind of kind of rattle sometimes. That's if you're going crazy and you're shaking your guitar, then you might hear some rattle. Um, of course, tuners. So I'm just like I said, I'm just acquiring all my parts, and I think that's pretty much all. I you know, obviously you need glue and you need clamps, and if you're gonna stain, I'm not talking about like sandpaper and um, rasps things, you know, of that nature. I'm just talking about the materials that you need specifically for the build. We'll talk about the tools here in a little bit. So, all right. So I started to paint the top white. And then I realized, man, I'm gonna probably need several coats because it's just soaking into the wood. I thought, man, I should probably do the sound holes first. But look how it's starting to take on a nice, um, nice boxy vibe. This is the most important part of this video. Um, not, the, not the calipers. Even though I did use these calipers to determine where the saddle was going to be 
on top of the box. So I went ahead and set these down on top of the box and marked where I want the saddle to go. So I'm kind of working from the saddle backwards. So I want you to take a look at this. See that little mark right there? That's where the calipers have determined that the, this is also called the golden ratio as well too. So you can see that little dot. So that's what I'm saying. That's how I, that's how I determined where the saddle was gonna go. Of course, the saddle will be marked up here. But I have everything laid out here on the ground. So if that's where the saddle is, and I wanna have a 23 inch scale neck, so I lay out the ruler here with the 23 inches, and that tells me where my nut is gonna be. So I lined up my 23 inch template with the nut perfectly aligned. And that tells me that I get all the way up to here on my fretboard. So I have my fretboard here. I know exactly how, how many frets I have in order to get my saddle to line up with that. And I also uh, laid out the heel in proportion, keeping in mind that the nut, you can see a little line right here, that's where I'm gonna be cutting off. So my zero fret would be right where that nut is. So we have plenty of room here for the tuners. So this is like what they call the, what I call the, the, the dry layout. I just make sure everything is laid out in a, in alignment and look at look i just barely need to cut off a little bit of these guys here i just barely had it long enough right it's about maybe two inches there and about maybe an inch here a little bit less than an inch um, I'll, of course i'll measure that all later but um like i said we're just laying everything out making sure everything is in alignment and that there's proportion exactly how you want it All right, it's been several days since I got to work on the Patriot caster. Woke up this morning, full of energy, gung-ho. I was gonna come down here and start working. Came down here and realized that the wind, yesterday we had severe wind. Oh my gosh, it was crazy. Well, it scattered all of my panels and um, sheet metal all over the back. It took me over an hour and a half just to clean it up, stack it up. <sighs> so frustrated. So frustrated. Yeah, we had it. We had severe winds yesterday. In fact, yesterday during church, all at the same time, everybody's phones went off <coughs> with a severe warning. It was perfect timing. Uh, so anyhow, today I am going to start carving this neck, and also uh, I'll be cutting the fretboard and just continuing where we left off. I um, cut the sound holes in the top of the board of the box. And then started just goofing off with some um, red, white, and blue paint. So we'll see how far we get today. So an easy way to remove the material from the headstock, you know, to make it thinner, is what they call dado. So what I do is I take the table saw and I just raise the blade about the thickness that you want to remove here. So I'm thinking about an eighth, an eighth of an inch ish eighth of an inch ish and then um, I've got a line marked here exactly where I want the beginning of the headstock right there I should have marked it up here instead of on the bottom but I can get it right there and then you just go back and forth back and forth back and forth back and forth First, we're going to go back with a file, polish it up. Now we're going to route these edges here. I also use that dado technique to cut down the thickness for the cigar box guitar top 
right here. And then I just raise the blade and then cut my back angle all the way up to there and then just break it off. But guys, <laughs> look at this wood, dude. It's got purples and greens and yellows and oranges and browns and oh my gosh, dude. I wanted to show you this. Some, this is some of the most beautiful wood I have seen in a long, 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 long time. So I brought the neck on the inside here so that you could actually see some of these colors that are embedded in this wood. So over here I have like yellows and like lavenders. It goes to like browns. And over here again, it goes to like, there's some actual blue and some... Um, again, some more purples. There's actually green interspersed in there. Browns. It's just crazy. Then we got this half round router bit and routed. And I tell you what, man, that saves a lot of sanding, a lot of work. And it gets it almost perfect. Obviously, we're going to go back and file it and sand it and carve it and make it ultimate. But you can see right off the bat there that it's starting to look like a legit cigar box guitar neck. So before we fully shape the neck, I typically like to cut out the fretboard and glue it up first. Now, I didn't show all the slotting, fret slotting, techniques. I have plenty of videos that show all that. You can go you can go search for that. Just type in Puckett Cigar Box Guitar Fret Slotting in the YouTube search bar and you'll get all sorts of videos that show that. So I'm going to glue that down next and then we'll do the final shaping on the neck. The dogs are so patient. What are we going to do now? So we are waiting for the glue to dry now. So we let the glue set all day long. So now we are ready to file, sand, shape, carve, mold. And also, cut the sound holes. Next, we are going to strategically put some stars using those, the blue and the little sticky stars. And then some stripes with some tape. A real quick PSA. What does that stand for? Public Service Announcement. Guys, you need to go check out my buddy Dave Tension at the Hot Sauce Guitar Kitchen. I will put hopefully a card up here, but definitely a link in the video description below. You will not be disappointed. Go, 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 go. I strategically placed three big stars and then three groups of little stars, each in groups of three. And... I also got the tape here so I could portion off this part here because I don't want any blue to get on here. So now we're just going to hit it with some blue. I just dropped this on my boot and now I got a blue, a blue spot on my boot. What the heck? That's all it takes. Just that alone right there. That's the beginnings. Guys, if you enjoy these videos and you want to consider supporting the channel, there's multiple ways you can do that. Number one, you could become a Patreon. I will put a link to my Patreon in the video description below. Number two, I also have a virtual tip jar, a PayPal link located in my YouTube banner. Number three, I sell t-shirts and whatnot at Teespring. I'll also put a link to that in the video description below. And a lot of times you'll see ads underneath here for the for the uh, t-shirts that say six strings or three strings too many and greetings fellow cigar bars, guitar enthusiasts. All, all of those little cliche sayings I got. Um, and then also, guys, get a load of this. Number four. 
if you want, if you really want to help out the channel, check this out. So I recently had the privilege and the honor, the opportunity to become an affiliate for, you guessed it, the CBGiddy.com. And so if you use the link that they provided me, which I'm providing for you in the video description below, it'll be a win, 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 win. Number one, you will be getting good quality parts. Number two, I'll be getting a little bit of a commission, so you'll be helping support the channel that way. Number three, you'll be helping an American company, Ben, ben CB Giddy Baker at cbgiddy.com. And then number four, what was number four? Oh, yeah, yeah, together we can solve global warming. Ah! So I've masked off the stars and masked off the stripes <clears throat> so that with this farmhouse red, I can go ahead and spray the stripes in here. It's kind of pink. It's kind of hoping for a little bit of red here. And this thing doesn't feel like it's shaking up very well. There you go. Much better. The only problem, if you want to call it a problem, is that I don't have the red stripe on the top. So I'm going to have a white stripe on the top, unfortunately. Dang it. But, hey, but I don't have the right size of stars and nor the right number of stars. So this is all just about for vibe anyway, right? It's not exact at all. It's gonna look cool. Sticky. Sticky, sticky. I still have to pull the, um, next I'll pull the, pull the little stars off and then there'll be white stars underneath those. Well, since I'm showing you all my stars and stripes stuff, I figure I show you the uh, swimsuit edition. So here's the back of the top of the swimsuit. See the stars and stripes? I also have the bottom, here's the bottom, the buttocks. Just, you know, stars and stripes, you know. At this stage of the game, we are contouring. So, guys, there's really no right or wrong way to do this. But there are a few things that really help out. This Shintu, it's got a coarse side and a fine side. It's like these little hacksaw blades that are like tied together somehow. Guys, this one here is a game changer. I've had this for years and years. It was a, it was a gift. And um, shame on me for forgetting who gave it to me, man. That sucks. But anyhow, so if you got one of these, good on you, man. Um, but that's not all I use. I mean, that's just, you know, a real coarse. I use the coarse side mostly just to move a lot of material but i use these roundies and i got three or four of these things and i just play drums with them to get all the dirt out and this one's rusty and stuff like that but dude i'm telling you what this thing works dude it works for like um these, these sections right here and also for these sections right here because i like to like just take the edge off a little bit like you can see right here so i basically use this round guy up in here to get these rounds, to get this part round here, and then to continue all the way around in this area. And also on the back side here where, where, I, where the router bit stops, I want it to kind of, I don't want to just have like a sharp edge, so I'll take these rounds and kind of round that off there. I can also use this sanding stick, which is starting to get gummed up, but still works pretty good. Again, this is the same thing, it's got a coarse side and a fine side, and I find myself usually using the coarse side. And this thing works great for a number of things. Again, it just removes a lot of material, but it doesn't leave the file marks. So it, this is kind of the intermediate in between the file 
an actual sandpaper where I just kind of go over it with this. And this, you'd be surprised at how, how, especially if you use real coarse, I think this is 60 grit. So you can really move a lot of material. But more than, more importantly than just moving the material is you're getting, you're, you're defining your, your contours at this point. So with this one here, I kind of just wanted a nice semi-circle here on the back side. And so I kind of aim for that as I'm taking off the material. And um, I try to keep uniform on both sides. So this side, the lower side and the top side, I kind of match those just to kind of have some symmetry, right? You don't want one side to be all big and the other side to be, if you can, I mean, obviously sometimes there's going to be times when that's cool too. But, uh, you know, like I said, this, every build's different. Um, oh yeah, yeah, I also use the little roundy. Not only the, the roundy here, which I could still, I still need to go back and get a little bit more right there. Um, and you got different sizes of these guys. You get skinny ones and fat ones and stuff. Next, I go just to regular sandpaper. And yeah, I can see, I can still see, I still need to get that part. Oh, another thing that this is good for too, is flattening these, the edges of the fret board to the, um, now you can use a file for this. You can use anything for this sandpaper, a sander if you like, whatever. But these flat sticks, man, I tell you what, you just pair them up like that, give it a little bit of pressure and just go to town and keep feeling it. And pretty soon it's just like smooth like butter. Like right there, it's like perfectly smooth. And then ultimately, ultimately, it's just going to be the feel. You're just going to feel it. Imagine what it's like feeling it, you know, because sometimes you might want a skinnier neck. Sometimes you might want... A thicker neck you know what i'm saying or a rounder neck or a square neck whatever you know that's that's when you just feel it and you make sure okay that's i can kind of feel maybe a little bit more needs to come off right here that's just me um and i can tell by looking that yes I, i'm in agreement that i need to take off somewhere right there so it's just all your personal taste this is the time this is the time right now to carve take your time and then just go by by degree start off coarse move to a medium and then you that's where you like fine tune all, make sure all your curves are voluptuous. And then um, once you're good with the, with the actual shape, yeah, so I'm looking at it now, I got, I got more to go here. I got more, more to go right here. Um, once you get your shape that you like, that's when you start sanding, staining it and sanding it and steel wooling it or whatever, you know, varnish, whatever you're gonna do, oil and that, you know, those are the final stages. This here is the intermediate uh, stage and um, Take your time, seriously, because this is a this is an actual loads of fun here. The other thing I like to do here is just like carve these guys um, smooth and then round right below the zero fret. So I'm going to continue to work on that, but it's just a fun part of the process here. The uh, this is the, one of the most transformative parts of the entire cigar box guitar building process right here. So take your time and have fun. Another way to see if your neck is really uh, contoured successfully is to look at it like this. So I got it next to my eye and I'm looking down this little plane right here. And so you can feel for bumps and you're gonna look for smoothness and contours. And I recommend doing this in all sorts of different light because every different angles are gonna give you different shadows. So I can tell by looking at this, I'm darn near perfect, dude, darn near. I got to take a little bit off right here and a little bit off right here. And then after that, dude, I'm calling it good because it is good. This thing here has sufficiently been contoured. So now after I just take off this, this little bump here, and yeah, again, you know, I look at it because the light's coming here and I can see this this from this angle here that there's a little bit of a contour there. And then when I look at it in this this light here, I can see right here that there's just, again, this is a subtle thing. This is what you call splitting hairs, man. This is what you call nitpicking. So, but ultimately, like I said, you use all of your senses, your eyes, your feel, um, you know, just, just for smoothness and stuff. Oh yeah, here's here's another trick too. Take your sandpaper, put it on a smooth, hard, hard surface, and then push down. Yeah, the bottom of it, I got carpet here, so it's nice and smooth. Got the frets on. They're all polished and filed and dressed. They look beautiful. I did some large solder burns for the top. 
And then I took out the inside to this thing and I just used just this guy here to get these round circles. And then I put some blue stain on the inside of the round circles and then wiped it off immediately. So I just got a real light blue stain on the inside of those circles. Um, okay, so where we're at now, oh yeah, plus I did polish this guy down with um, very fine grit sandpaper. Got it down to where you can almost see a reflection on it. So it's very, very smooth. But I figured I was going to do some <clears throat> natural stain on here so that hopefully it just brings out the beautiful color of this beautiful wood. So I am curious to see how this, how this works. I don't know if you can see that or not. Yeah. Just kind of gives it the wet look, you know? Oh my gosh. All right, you guys seeing what I'm seeing? <laughs> Yeet. Wow. Gosh, man. I had no idea. No idea. Oh my gosh. Hmm. Gosh. I am at a lack for words. So I might have to do this a couple of times. And then, um, yeah, I want to ruin it. Maybe lacquer it. So I opted for some nitrocellulose lacquer. This is the stuff they put on the old, old, old vintage guitars. Um, yeah, this stuff's cool. If you want to get yourself some. Re-Ranch. Oh yeah, look at, look at how shiny that is. And I don't waste it up here because it's going to be in the box, but I want to make sure that it fully covered. Just a light coat, several light coats. That's all you need. Hmm, 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 hmm. <laughs> Moving right along, <clears throat> a lot's been going on here. So the top here, I went ahead and cut out for the pickup. In order for me to do that, I had to have the neck screwed in place and my pilot holes on the corners drilled so that I knew exactly where that top was gonna be because I was going to be mounting this pickup. Oh, the other thing I did is I painted the pickup blue and then distressed it. So what I did here is I notched the bottom of this, uh, I, I notched this wood here to match the bottom of the pickup uh, using that same de dado technique as I used to notch this part here. I just notched a little, little groove for that the magnet to sit in. So that would be at the right height right here, right? So I didn't want to kind of use that as my gauge, right? And then once I did, I made sure that that pickup was snug in there, and then I gave it three screws. I don't know if you can see those. One, two, three. So those screws are just kind of wedging it in place. 
and that's that's it's solid. It ain't gonna go nowhere. So say say why didn't I uh why didn't I use six screws right here instead of three? The answer to that, my friend, is because six screws would be three screws too many. We're coming into the home stretch. Got the switch, the jack, the potentiometer, the hinge, the saddle. And the saddle has been natural stained and nitrocellulose to match the neck. Of course, if you notice, I, I do have the stickers. And those are the stickers that were the um, used for the stars and stripes over here. I just peeled them off and stuck them in there. So you can actually see those pretty good. And then I also took a file to the edge of this thing here to match the sound hole. And I also took the file to the edge here. So I think I'll go back and maybe sand that and continue to distress it just a little bit. As far as the neck goes, I did want to point out that I uh, paint, spray painted the bushings for the tuners with red also. So I got some stain, rubbed it all over the entire box, then rubbed it off and it got into all the cracks and kind of gives it this nice general overall aged vibe. I will open it up and let you see the insides next. So both of the pickups go to this three-way here. And the output, the middle one of the three-way goes to the input of the potentiometer and the output of the potentiometer to the jack. Of course, it's grounded. Everything's grounded. Um, this wire here, it goes up to the pickup. I just measured, made sure that this was in the center of the strings, drilled the hole, and then I put some hot glue underneath here, then centered this thing up so it wouldn't teeter-totter. I'll probably put some more screws in here just to keep this thing secure. And then also a little bit of glue right there just to keep those wires out of the hole. A little bit of paint on the volume control knob. Nothing could be more appropriate than strings that are made in America. These are the Southbound Strings Blues Blasters, 0 0.044, 0 0.034, 0 0.026, all wound. These are supposed to be GDG, but you know me, I tune them EBE. And of course, I do get my strings at cbgiddy.com. Link in the description. All right, we are strung up and we are tuned E, B, E. So we do have a bit of a volume mismatch between the humbucker and the single coil. The single coil is just loud. Hot pickup here. So I have it dialed in with a sound here on the humbucker. And actually the humbucker sounds really good. pickup or the middle switch here they get both single coil and a mixture of the humbucker <laughs> Thank you. 
inspiring instrument. My gosh, I guess I should learn Yankee Doodle or something. You guys have ever heard of Strymon? This is a little delay machine they got here. It's got some cool sounds. Listen to this. So I'm going to be playing it. Obviously, I'm going to make some mistakes, okay? But I'm just going to play it by, by my ear um, in the key of whatever this is. E. sound so I should try my hand at the stars and stripes
you like these videos, <clears throat> if you like these videos, be sure to like and subscribe, share and comment. See you in the next video. Ah. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. Yeah.